So today I'm down at what used to be my brother-in-law's house, but is now Corey and Austin's new house. Uh, if you didn't see their announcement on the girls' channel, they actually got the house and we've been working on it a little bit off and on for the past, I don't know, nearly a month now, I guess. But what I've been doing the last few days is working on countertops. Uh, they shopped around to buy countertops and found out how expensive they were, and they're very expensive. And I told them that I could build countertops like I did at our house. We've had some people ask questions, kind of how you go about doing that. Uh, what, what this is is uh, three quarter inch cabinet grade oak plywood. Um, and it finishes off really nicely. And I, I had the idea back when we did our house, you know, if it's nice enough for cabinetry, then why not countertops? Um, some people may not, you know, kind of like the idea of having wood countertops, but if you, you know, if you seal them correctly, they'll last a lifetime. Uh, and so far ours are nine to 10 years old and they're, holding up really well and we really like them and we really like the cost savings. Um, the, the plywood is expensive, but in comparison to what, you know, any kind of made countertops or stone countertops especially, uh, it's not even close. Uh, this plywood is, you know, about $100 a sheet and we've used four sheets. so. With the trim and all, it's, I don't know, 500 or so, maybe a little over that, $500 for a whole new set of countertops that'll last a long time. So that's a major big cost savings. Um, we actually tore out the old ones yesterday and I began building these yesterday morning and I thought that, you know, I might get a little bit of it done, but as time as the day went on, Austin came to help me and, we ended up getting all of them put down, which I wasn't really planning on, but once we, you know, later in the day, we saw that we were getting pretty close. We just kept working and worked till about, I don't know, about seven o'clock last night and finally got them all down. Uh, they're still gonna have to be all sanded and uh, trimmed. I went this morning, bought the trim. I'm fixing to start putting it on. Um, and once that's on, then I'll begin to sand it and try to get all the, you know, if there's any rough places or any places where we actually joined the plywood. I used a biscuit joiner and some biscuits and glue. And these cabinets are um, actually homemade cabinets that my father-in-law, Pat, built. Uh, how old his house is? 30 something, 32, 34 years ago. So they're homemade cabinets, which means they're, they're actually, uh, pretty stout plywood. Uh, they're birch plywood on the outside and on the interior, the frame that's holding them up is all solid pine. So that makes it easier as far as putting these types of countertops on. You've got um, um, some really good wood framing to actually attach the countertops to. So that helps. I don't know how well this would work on a set of store-bought cabinets with uh, you know, the press board and the MDF and what have you, but knowing that these were homemade and knowing he built them he also built or me and him built the ones in our house so i knew how they were built and these were the same you got a lot of uh, a lot of place to be able to attach these and what i did was once i got them cut uh, i just shot them down with finish nails to that wood framing underneath anywhere there was any and you know pretty long two inch nails and they'll be there forever more as far as I know. Uh, I know ours has really worked well. Um, what we did on ours, and I'm gonna do the same on this once I get done sanding, there, Corey's gonna pick out some stain and we'll stain them and then we'll begin the sealing process since it's wood. And what, what I did in my house was put, I think it was about eight coats of uh, water-based polyurethane and it takes a while for that to cure. It took, I don't know, three or four weeks at our house before it finally got hard enough on top that you could just use it without worrying. Uh, didn't really know that when we did ours. Um, I ended up 
on up at our house, I ended up opening a, a cannon jar on ours and I couldn't get it open. So I laid it down on the countertop and kind of pushed down on it real hard to, to get the lid off. And it left a ring in the countertop. And I thought that maybe the stuff just wasn't gonna be durable enough. But a little while later, I don't remember how long it's been, I don't know, it was probably a week or two weeks after that, then I realized it had, had actually hardened and it's been good ever since. We kind of, you know, blended that ring in to where it's not all that noticeable now. So once it does have the right cure time, it's a really durable uh, countertop and it kind of kind of matches the rest of the house and matches the wood floor and matches the cabinetry for sure. So to me, it's a good uh, cost you know, a cost-efficient alternative to many thousands of dollars of, of uh, store-bought or stone countertops. Uh, one funny thing that I kind of realized yesterday, we went to put the sink in. She bought a, a, a cast iron enameled sink and I was kind of dreading that. It's been a while since I've done one of those, but it, it ended up okay. Um, I had to go back up to our house and try to find a, a jigsaw to cut the hole out with. And I wasn't sure I still had one. I knew, uh, I can remember in, just in the back of my mind loaning it out to someone. And I don't think I ever got it back and I don't exactly remember who I loaned it to. So anyway, I started digging around in the basement and I finally found one. And the one I found was one of Pap's old jigsaws. And it's probably as old as I am or older. And I plugged it in to make sure it'd run, and I dug around and found three or four blades. And it did run, so I brought it down here. And then I got to thinking, um, I'm almost positive that that same jigsaw cut out the sink hole in this house when it was new, along with some other things. And then I thought about it a little more, and I'm pretty sure that's the one we used when we built our house uh, 28, 9 years ago because I can remember using that saw. The more I used it yesterday, I, it began coming back to me, I could remember it. So I thought that was kind of uh, ironic that all these years later, I'm almost positive that's the same saw that built, that helped build these cabinets, but specifically cut out that sinkhole. And here we are over 30 years later doing the same thing again in the same house with the same saw. So I thought that was pretty cool. And I told, told Tipper about it and she liked that. So. Um, I'm going to get started measuring and cutting the trim on this so I can get it on, get it shot on, and then I'm going to try to uh, start the sanding process, which I kind of dread, but it's all got to get done. So we'll get that done and then figure out what we're going to do about the staining and about uh, the uh, sealing process because I think they're actually going to try to move in here, start moving in tomorrow. So. We're a little bit behind, so we're going to get started on this and see how good it turns out. Okay, here's a little bit closer up look at the countertops. Uh, the backsplash, I just ripped off some pieces about four inches tall of the same plywood and just kind of put it back here and then put a piece of cove molding on top to transition it to the wall. Uh, right here is one of the joints. I used a biscuit joiner to join those with some glue, and then I'll, I'm going to go over all of this and sand it. Uh, it'll take quite a bit of sanding to get it down to where we can start putting the stain and the uh, polyurethane on it. And it comes over over here to the hole where the stove goes. I put just a little bit of lattice mold out here on the 
on the end grain of the plywood and then out here on the front that's just a, like a little bit of half round stock just to just to round off the, the hard edge of the plywood um, it goes over and makes another turn and there's another joint and then right there's the sink she picked out a pretty pretty nice little sink and we'll have to plumb it in put the faucets faucet in it and try to get all the the drain underneath hooked up and it goes over here and makes a little return and that's pretty much it uh, i've got to put all the cabinet pulls on we we used the old ones we just took them all off and kind of cleaned them and steel wooled them a little bit to get them brighten them up a little bit they were kind of tarnished but so far it's working out pretty good it's just a kind of a long process uh, but i think it'll turn out good and it'll definitely turn out good I'm not spending all those thousands of dollars to <laughs> to have some uh, have some made or buy some that's you know comes from the store these are all homemade and very very much uh money savings went on there so i'll keep going and check back in a little later so i finally got the sink in or i had the sink in yesterday but finally got it everything plumbed up today and got the faucet in the drain was a little bit difficult uh, this sink is a deeper sink and the drain, the actual baskets inside the sink were a little bit further set back toward the wall than the other one. So all the uh, drain plumbing had to be kind of changed. And I put it all together and thought I had it pretty good shape and run the water in it and everything seemed good. And then I actually went home next supper and came back and I could see it was dripping from the trap. So I had to take it all back apart and then I could tell that it was kind of in a, in a bind. It didn't, the trap was kind of, had some pressure on one side of it. So I took it apart and shortened the pipe here and there and put it back together and that time it seemed to do pretty good. So I stopped up the sink and uh, ran it about half full on each side and let it sit there a little while to be sure the baskets didn't leak pull the stoppers out and let all that water go at once and no leaks underneath so seem to be in pretty good shape on that but I've still got a whole lot of uh, hole filling to do and a lot of sanding to do before we can get to the actual staining part I'm hoping that I can get all that done tomorrow um, we'll see I don't know and get all that done then we can begin to st the, put stain on and begin the uh, sealing process of it to where uh, it'll take quite a few coats and then we'll see what else there is to do we've got to put all the cabinet pulls on uh, got to put the appliances in i've got to take this range hood out and put in a microwave there over top of the stove so that'll be another project uh, by itself so anyway uh, i guess that'll be it for this video and maybe here in a day or two we'll document our progress as we get a little bit further along